Today we're starting off this video on the south end of Normandy Isle in Miami Beach. And I wanted to come over here because first of all, we haven't walked through this area yet. And the other thing about it is we're gonna transition from seeing like condos and little low rise buildings around here into um, a neighborhood with single family homes. They're literally only like a couple blocks apart. So it's one interesting dynamic about Miami that we have here where you can literally have, you know, a ton of buildings like this around here and then just a couple blocks down, you know, expensive houses, which is kind of unusual for most places, I would say. But the thing about this area, guys, like this building behind me, condos here used to go for 175K all day long. Now, the cheapest one I saw up there right now is 320,000. Same thing with all these small little buildings you see around here like these places super cheap in the past now even these tiny little buildings that are like you know 70 years old go for a premium now we're gonna walk past one right up the street here that i sold just a few years ago which was a decent apartment the building's not the greatest but it was a decent size one bedroom one and a half bath i sold it for like 165 grand now that same apartment would probably go for the high twos. And that's just like three years later. So it's just nuts, guys, what's happening around here. And by the way, there's nothing for sale, at least from what I could tell when I was looking ahead of time in this area right now. Rent prices here used to be around 1,300 a month for a one bedroom, around 17, 1,800 bucks a month for a two bedroom. Well, now the new price for a two bedroom is about 2,800 a month, roughly. And if you want a one bedroom around here, it's going to be close to two grand, probably 1800 and up. And that's for one of these tiny little apartments, guys. It has no amenities. And really the only amenity is, is that it is walking distance to the beach. You walk about eight blocks this way. You're at the beach. You walk a couple blocks over here and you have 71st Street. And there's a bunch of little stores and restaurant, things like that over there. Now, this is the building, guys, that I sold this unit in. It actually was that one right up there. And uh, we sold it for about 160 something thousand. Two parking spaces that are gated in here. You know, it's not the nicest building in the world, but it was cheap. And guess what? Back then it still made sense to buy it because literally you'd be paying less to own this place than it would cost you to rent something similar. Now guys, I have a lot of great information today for you. The housing market is literally going to explode with inventory over the next six months to 12 months. And this is not me making this up. This is backed up by data, which we're gonna go over right now. So first, let's start with pending home sales, okay? From July, 2021 to July, 2022, pending home sales are down 20%, guys. So 20% less homes are going under contract this July than what went under contract last July. The housing market right now is in much worse shape than the Fed is willing to admit. They think that things are still going pretty good in the housing market, but this data proves otherwise. So basically what we're seeing right now is existing home supply shooting through the roof, okay? And at the same time, you have a lot of sellers trying to list their home, which is increasing the inventory, trying to catch the last train out of town before, you know, there are no more trains essentially. And this is also gonna put even more pressure on home builders that have a lot of inventory sitting on the market and in the process of being built right now as well. And we're gonna talk more about this in just a minute. Now you see guys how we just transitioned from the buildings right behind us and now, boom, we got nothing but houses here. It's an interesting little neighborhood because of that. Now speaking of new construction guys, new home sales are down 30% from a year ago. That is a dramatic decrease in the amount of sales for new homes, okay? and this sharp drop in new home sales is another indicator that the housing market is in a recession right now. New single family home inventory right now is at an almost 11 month supply. So that's almost a year's supply just from new homes. So all this dynamic that we've heard over the past couple years about, you know, there's a housing shortage. Well, we don't have it no more guys because we have a ton of new construction homes out there right now being built that already are built or in the process of being built that are available to purchase, okay? And just in new homes, we have right now about 464,000 available 
brand new construction homes available for purchase, okay? And only 45,000 of those are completed and ready to move in. So that's only about 10%. So look at your housing market right now, how much inventory is available, how much inventory is going up, and just imagine adding you know, an extra 20% to that number or 30% because we have a lot of houses that are being built right now or are in the process. This is really going to increase the available inventory by literally tenfold just when we're talking about brand new homes, okay? And now here's something I wanna mention. If you saw the video I did a few days ago with Travis from Real Estate Mindset, if you haven't seen it, go to my channel, check it out. But we talked about uh, the Fred chart there that showed the active number of listings in the US right now. And according to the Fred chart in July, there's about 750,000 active listings. Now, those are available listings that are ready to buy and move into right now. Add the 464,000 that are coming from new construction. What number does that give you? That gives you 1.2 million active listings for sale once these new homes are delivered. And by the way, these new homes are expected to be delivered within the next year, maybe even by the end of this year, depending on how fast these places get built, okay? So, why is this important? Well, it's important because if we look at that inventory chart that I'm gonna put up on the screen for you guys to see, typically over the past few years, pre-pandemic, average normal inventory for the housing market was anywhere between 1.1 and 1.4 million homes and if we get this inventory number to rise to 1.2 million well guess what we're literally back to pre-pandemic inventory levels and this is not even taken into consideration anybody else who lists their home for sale today or throughout the rest of the year this is just existing inventory guys what's for sale right now plus the new construction that is in the works of being built. So we have a ton of inventory coming. And the funny thing is, that's just the homes for sale. We also have more rental inventory coming as well. Right now, according to Rent Cafe, apartment construction is at a 50 year high, guys. So there are a ton of brand new construction apartment rentals that are going to be available by the end of this year. So this is going to come into the housing market very soon. We're not talking, you know, next year, three years from now. This is gonna be by the end of 2022. And there are about 420,000 apartments that are gonna be delivered nationwide by the end of this year, okay? And this is gonna to come to many cities that desperately need it as well. Places like Miami are getting a ton of them. We're gonna go over a little list here of places that are getting the most of these uh, new construction apartment rentals, okay? New York is getting 28,000 new units. Dallas, they're getting 23,000 new units. Miami is getting 19,000. Austin, Texas is getting 18,000. Houston is getting 17,000. Phoenix getting 15,000. Seattle, 15,000. What do you notice the trend here? You see that most of the cities I just named off, and there's more of them too, by the way, you can always go check out this info for yourself down in the description. But what's the one thing all these cities have in common? These are where prices have shot up the most. This is where it costs more than ever to rent or to buy a home for the most part. And this is where the inventory is desperately needed. So let's combine the new construction units being built. Let's combine people trying to sell the house before the train has left the station. Let's combine these 420,000 new rental units. What does that give you? A magical new supply of housing that wasn't there just a few months ago. So you're gonna see guys, this, this whole housing market turn around so fast, which is kind of a record because typically real estate moves very slow, but just because of the complete perfect storm of different dynamics we have in the market right now with all these new places being built, combining with people trying to rush their homes to market, including investors before it's too late, you're gonna see an inventory surge like we've never seen before. And this is gonna be great news for anybody that's been feeling left out, who feels like they're never gonna be able to own a home or the rent prices are just too high. There's relief coming, guys. and. This data backs that up. By the way, guys, sometimes 
a few of you make comments about you know how I can just walk out here in this heat and trust me it's hot in fact it's so hot that last week in Miami we hit two record highs for heat I think it was on Wednesday and Thursday last week Miami International Airport recorded 96 degrees and that's before humidity with the humidity the high temps were about 106 so go figure that 106 degrees out here guys walking around in this temperature right now here's one for sale looks like it's probably vacant you know maybe one of these days we can walk through one of these vacant houses as well I'll need to kind of plan that into the video so I know which one we're gonna go to but something like this might be interesting to uh, make a part of the walk but today I checked the weather before I came out here and it's right now it's 105 with the heat index which has been pretty much every day guys and they say they call it uh, an emergency when it's 108 with the humidity so that's only three degrees away from an emergency and I'm out here walking throughout the week to make these videos for you guys so quick round of applause on that one <laughs> but seriously I'd, I'd love it you know I love being out here and making these videos for you guys regardless of how hot it is but I will tell you that I really can't wait for winter I'm just so looking forward to winter this year can't come soon enough Zillow with their iBuyer program made huge mistakes when they bought all these homes over the past couple of years and basically what they did is they used their Zestimate tool to figure how much a home is worth and how much they should pay for it and made offers based on that guys and now obviously Zillow has lost hundreds of millions of dollars by doing this and the reason is and wait for it wait for it because a computer can't tell you what your house is worth okay now this is why it's important that you have a real estate agent that knows your local market especially with the conditions that we have right now with how fast things are changing because right now the overall market trends and values are changing at a record pace that we've never seen before and it's more important than ever to have somebody that knows the market to help you determine what your house is worth if you're a seller and also what you should be offering if you're a buyer because without that experience guys if you're relying on these Zillow models look where that got them you know they're losing hundreds of millions of dollars that's gonna be you if you don't actually uh, have somebody with experience who knows the market that can help you out so that's the first thing and some of you have been asking me about appraisals and why are appraisals so important because appraisals can make it so that you don't fall into this trap of paying way too much money for a house that you should have not bought okay you know for a house that's worth 400,000 people are offering 480 you know 500,000 because they just want the place not taking into consideration what the market's doing and what the house is really worth just because you can afford the monthly payment doesn't mean you should buy it at that price so honestly guys I think whether you're paying cash or not you should still get an appraisal done because if you don't then you could be drastically overpaying for that piece of property when it's not necessary to do so so keep that in mind and also if you're getting a loan you're not going to have a choice you will have to get an appraisal it's not going to be optional and basically what happens with these appraisals is because the market has gone up so fast then a lot of times the appraisal will come in significantly lower than what people are agreeing to pay and that's why it's important for you to get the appraisal because if you don't then you could be winding up paying significantly more than what the house is worth and that basically just applies to cash buyers you know if you are financing luckily you're not going to have to worry about that you're going to be getting the appraisal done and go back to the drawing board with the seller when the appraisal comes in lower than what you offered right now because of the recession business owners all across the country are trying to look at ways that they can cut costs and 80 percent of employees right now surveyed say that they're worried about getting laid off because of the recession and they don't think that their job is recession proof and 56 percent of these people who are surveyed guys say that they don't feel financially prepared for a recession now 
This is not a huge surprise considering how we're seeing the credit card usage go through the roof right now and people paying exorbitant prices for food and gas and rent, mortgage payments, property taxes, everything you can think of costs so much more than it did just a couple years ago. So it's no surprise that people aren't ready for this. Now just because we're in a recession doesn't mean that all businesses are going to perform layoffs. There might be some of them that are going to find other ways to cut back on costs and expenses and layoffs could be the last resort. And I think that the smaller the company you work for, the more of a traditional small business it is, maybe the less likely you're going to see layoffs because there's more of a personal connection and the business owner might care more about you. And if, especially if you have a good relationship, you've been with the company for a long time, more than likely companies like that are going to do the best they can to try and keep as many of employees as they can. But obviously the big corporations guys, they just look at the numbers and the lowest man in the totem pole starts getting cut. And now that the recession is just getting started guys, we haven't even seen how many layoffs are going to come. So keep your eyes open for this because you just don't know whether or not your job is going to be secure or not as we head into uncharted waters. Back in March of 2021, there was another stimulus bill signed that allowed for 1.9 trillion in spending to basically you know help people that have been affected by the pandemic and families who are in need things like this guys that is a giant chunk of the six trillion that was printed okay that's one third of the money and now basically what's happening is all of the states got a chunk of this money and they need to disperse all of this money by September 30th, which is one month from now basically, or they have to give the money back to the treasury. And the reason why I wanna bring this up is because our country is in such financial trouble right now because of all this money printing, right? And I'm sure a good chunk of that 1.9 trillion has already been spent by states. But in all sorts of places, it hasn't been spent yet, including here in Florida, they haven't spent a bunch of it yet. And what they're going to do is they're going to helicopter out the money here in Florida to some of the poorest families in Florida right now that have kids. That's what they're planning on doing with the money. On top of that, they're going to be giving bonuses to the first responders that, uh, you know, were working during the pandemic. And, you know, we can go back and forth about whether or not these people deserve the money. That's not the issue. That's not the point I want to make here. The point I want to make is if there's all this free money that's still sitting in these states' bank accounts and if they don't use it, they have to give it back, why don't they just voluntarily give it back? I mean, obviously, sure, they could say, well, you know, everybody else got their piece, so we want to give uh, as many people their cut as we, as we can, right? But on the other hand, because our country is in such financial trouble, why can't these states that have excess right now just give it back and, and make our national debt go down by just a little bit, guys. 1.9 trillion is a lot of money, you know? That will take a nice little bite out of our national debt. So, you know, you could say I'm wrong on this, but hey, they want to raise our taxes to collect this money back. So instead of raising our taxes and making inflation worse, by the way, because that's what this is gonna do, they're gonna continue to give out money to people and they're going to go out and spend it and the demand for goods and services is going to stay high and along with everything else is so long as people have the excess money to pay for this stuff now obviously guys if if the states were to give the money back which we know is not going to happen this is just a pipe dream that i'm just you know sharing my thoughts with you guys here but if they were to do this then obviously the requirement would need to be that this goes directly uh back into lowering the national debt I mean, it can't be used for something else. They can't take this money and, you know, find a new program to fund or whatever. No, it just goes towards the national debt, paying off our bills, guys, like a responsible American. Who would have thought? By the way, guys, another reason I wanted to come to this neighborhood today is it's one of the last few areas in all of Miami Beach where you can actually still buy a single family home for under a million dollars in some cases. Usually they're gonna be houses on this side of the street over here. Over there is the Bayside, so obviously those are gonna be a few million dollars because they're waterfront property. But believe it or not, there are still houses over here for less than a million, which is crazy because I remember just a few years ago 
when a lot of these houses were selling for four or five hundred thousand. I'm also trying to choose places like this that have a lot of trees and lots of shade, trying to escape that 105 degree heat. <laughs> Now, it might be a little too soon to tell, but I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know if you're seeing uh, surges in inventory in your local neighborhood, because obviously this is not all gonna come at once, guys, just like nothing ever does. It's gonna come in waves. Some places are gonna get more new apartments delivered sooner than others. You know, more homes are gonna go for sale in places that are uh, highly investor-driven markets where you know a lot of these investors are trying to cash out before it's too late things like this that's where we're going to see the inventory spike first so let me know if you are in one of these areas and what you're seeing over there because by hearing from you guys and people reading the comments we can all learn what's happening across the country and try to decide for ourselves when it's a good time to buy, when it's a good time to sell, etc. If you enjoyed this video and you found it entertaining, please subscribe to the channel and check out my next video on the screen right over here, and I'll catch you over in the next one.